Hi, I'm Alice. Hi, I'm Justin. And you're listening to the Otterly Allison Podcast. Who knows what we'll talk about. Oh my god, Allison, it's raining so hard. That is here too. And it was thunder last night, and it's like 37, it's so weird. I opened the door for Haley. Uh, by the way, I hit record while you were in the bathroom. I opened the door for Haley, and she looked out, and she goes... <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess you're not going out. This one she didn't know. I have colored in all my days so far. What? So working out. Like you're doing better than me. Yeah. I noticed you covered up your wine in your on your background yesterday. Oh, I was no. like, oh, I guess that's appropriate for work to cover up the wine. He didn't move my pillows when he sat down yesterday. <laughs> he came in here for, he's been actually staying out in his office. Well, because it's his new job and he's like, I haven't figured out my routine and my flow. So. Yeah, I get that. I do too. Mine's all, in, mine's are... disrupted right now too because of yeah. everything. Yeah. I've gotten three deltas done though. Woohoo! You're again ahead of me. <laughs> one of them pissed me off though. Like they were Which not. One? So the app dev one, like I was in the release notes, read through them, was going through, and I'm like, none of these answers are in the release notes. Like oh, I went yeah. two in the release notes, and that was it. Because they were all grouped in like I couldn't even find like the flow designer release notes. So, yeah. Yeah. I know I mentioned it over chat, but yeah, I, I, I use both my PDI and the release notes because mm -hmm. I can filter my lists in my PDI faster than I can get through the release notes yeah. and then go to the release notes once I find flow designer, for example, go yeah. straight. I mean, it. some of them, I just go in my PDI and look like when it was like, which is the mini to mini table. I'm like, well, I already know, but let me double check because I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nice. Are you, uh, do you go to our sales calls on Mondays or no? No. I didn't know if you wanted to listen in or whatever, but the reason I ask is because I, <laughs> on my section yesterday, I announced yeah. that, uh, Washington DC is coming on February 1st, early access. Oh. I know. I and the excitement on your face is just. I just took my HR Delta and they're deprecating the HR agent workspace and forcing people to move to. The actual workspaces. Yeah. And yeah, it kind of like they did. Reported uh, as of Yokohama. Yokohoma? Mm -hmm. Or Yokohama or whatever. Yokohama? Yeah. What's X? Do you know what X is? Xanadu. Xanadu. Okay. I stumbled in a meeting yesterday. I was like, I can't remember what X is. Then Z is Zurich. And I then. Still think it could have been Z boot. <laughs> yes. I think we all can agree it should have been Z boot. Well. And then it all starts over. Maybe. We don't know. I don't know. They haven't said. I haven't heard. Oh. You don't have like inside channels, B to CMA? I probably do. I'm trying to get all my points in. So getting my deltas done will give me about I have to do a few like start like trainings to get my continuing learning or whatever, but So trying to get that done because I have to all, have them all in by March. Like I've done them all. I just right. have to submit them, <laughs> which is the part that I always forget to do. So. Besides the HR <coughs> workspace, have you found anything else out new or intriguing or interesting? Um, so in the HR one, because I just did it literally like 20 minutes ago, they have a lot of cool stuff for like managers to create like career pathing for their employees. And they can apply, like, here are the learnings I want you to complete. Here are the, and they call them, like, journey designers. Yes. And I was like, I need this for my people. <laughs> <laughs> like, we have IDPs, but it's not the same. Like, right. it was very, I was like, what? And I know they've had some of that before, but they've enhanced it now. And I was just like, what? I need some of them. But we don't own HR, so. And it's, I think, the most expensive application, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of it's, course, they have all the cool stuff in that one. <laughs> well, I, I, like you, every time I get in there, I'm like, oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Oh, I could probably use that. You know, and it's just, and then I move on. And then... <laughs> the one thing I haven't ever played with, which I'm interested in a little bit, is the coaching piece, which isn't part of HR. Because 
in consulting, <laughs> we have certain people that need a little bit of coaching. Yep. And I, it would be nice to have that like documented for both the positive and the, if you're not cutting it, I'd have all the evidence. <laughs> like, yep. I know that sounds kind of I, negative. I, but, yeah. Well, I think I have played around with it a little bit mm -hmm. just to understand it and talk about it. But I think like if I'm putting myself in your shoes, do you yeah. remember way back when um, you were a delivery manager <laughs> a long time ago and you were struggling with getting people to write stories correctly? It was just like, this is how a story is written. Story records are one of the things that you can coach on. So you could actually just have the system randomly generate a task for a manager based on a story record. They go look at it and there's a checklist of kind of like, you know, is the acceptance criteria as the story points right? You know, and I'm then for this meeting, the idea <laughs> portal. Yeah, I think that story records and coaching are a perfect match because, at least in like you said, the consulting world, yeah. that's where all our work kind yeah. of centers around. Is well, in in order for our like our super senior like architects and things, they need to be able to write stories that can be actually developed. Right. You know, and not giving away our secret sauce. Like we do a tech approach or the solution as part of the story so that one, the architect is solutioning it and not a junior because <laughs> we want. Right. And then two, it helps upskill our people. And I'm like, do you all not understand this connection? So you're going to use the idea portal. I am now. <laughs> And I already know who I'm assigning this to, to run with it, so. Nice. I think that's a perfect fit. I, I don't know, I've never thought of it. Huh? What else can, can you coach on like a project record? Or is any it just record, like any record. Okay. Yeah, so you could coach an EM, I guess, on a project record. Coach a technical person on a story. And does it like look at, did they fill it out? It, or is it just like it learns off of what they should do? I think it creates a task, and it may have changed since I looked at it last. It creates a task for the manager to go do a review of it. And when they review it, they get to provide feedback. So it could be like, they look at the story, and it's like a random, it's a randomized coaching, right? So it's just, I get my story, I'm looking at, okay, Allison. Um, you suck. You used all lowercase letters and no punctuation. That's not how we write here, okay. you know. And then they get the feedback. They have to acknowledge it or respond. So there's a back and forth. Okay. I've been wondering like what all, and I just haven't had time to sit and play with it. So that's exciting. And I imagine you could do some automation around how, yeah. like, how it analyzes it. I don't think there's any out of the box analysis because it can apply to any record. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they kind of create a framework yeah. for it. I actually <laughs> gave you something. <laughs> What We're else did you learn about? Now. Um, now, the coaching thing I've always been interested in, like, just how it works. So. Have you looked at um, the one that I would love to dive deeper into, but it's really hard because it's a product that only works if you've got active data, people using it, and that's the um, process optimization? Have you looked I at haven't that? yet, but I read about it. It's like, Ooh. Yeah. They just acquired another process mining company. I think it was just announced in their press releases. Huh. And so they seem to be investing a lot in yeah. that process optimization. And I guess like once you have, you know, the data and you can see, well, this record went to this state, to this state, to this group and see how everything changes. You could put together some paths, I guess, of where things are going and look at bottlenecks and yeah. not sure how much that applies to a story so much, but no, but I think one of the challenges we have is a lot of our customers think their processes are just top notch. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> and self not, it's not up to me to dictate the process, but it's up to me to challenge it. And that would be helpful to have to help, especially when we, so my favorite projects, which you know, are when someone's been on the platform for like 10 years and we're coming in to like show them, Hey, did you know there's now a cab workbench because you yeah. all weren't saying top of, you could easily be like, this is why you need to just deboot and start over. Or this is why we need to re-engineer what you're doing. Like, 
Yeah, well, it's funny you mentioned that you talked to Connor yesterday. Yeah. Um, there's, and I'll just <laughs> describe it for the podcast. It's a customer who's been a longtime ServiceNow customer, and they came to him wanting to Z-boot. And when he told me what was going on, I was like, they don't need to Z-boot. They just oh. need to clean up what they're doing. Oh, you disagree? I disagree. Ooh. If you've been on for 10 years, and you have not, and I, that's fine if you upgrade, but they don't turn things on when you're just upgrading. So right. like, you may not, they have their own version of the cab workbench. They have their own version of custom apps that are skirting licensing. They have yes, a bunch so of customizations that a Z boot is the only way to fix it because it's so clustered at this point that to unwind it is just going to be more work than starting fresh. Okay. And they were a spinoff company. So they have that other company's garbage in there as well. Gotcha. Okay. You must have got more detail than I did. I did. I got a lot. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> the way I heard it was kind of like, I remember the custom apps to skirt it, but I was like, I told him, I was like, well, unless they're willing to go buy those apps, they're going to need their custom apps. Like, <laughs> Well, but they're also doing a bunch of stuff for constituents and not using CSM. Right. And so I told them, I said, they really need to, if they would go with PSDS and CSM, they wouldn't even need their custom apps because it's out of box. And they told him they wanted to get back to out of box. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And so I was like, there's a product yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Connor, he always gets the PSDS stuff. I don't know what his affinity is for it, but... He's... I think it just happens to fall in his lap, because this one was labeled ITSM. <laughs> so, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Is my video messing up for you? It's a little, but I just assumed it was the rain and it would be fine when it recorded. Like, you're it... a little blurry, but I can hear you fine. Okay. I was just checking, yeah. I, my video is totally, like, spazzing out. And you sound good and look good, but mine doesn't. Well, the rain has stopped for now. It's just like coming in huge gusts. Yes. We're supposed to get like 60 mile an hour flat winds, which is almost worse than the tornado. Especially after a rain, because like all yeah. the roots are loose. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know tornadoes are bad. So I said almost as bad. I, can you guys get tornadoes down there? Yeah, you're flat enough. I mean, where I grew up, though, I grew up in Tornado Alley, so it just, I'm used to, like, here, I'm like, are there tornado sirens? And David's like, I mean, we don't really have tornadoes. I'm like, but you could. And is there enough warning don't think to, like, sirens, yeah. cover? But I have not heard a single tornado warning since I have moved here. So for three years, I have not heard a tornado siren, which is super weird. I've never heard one. So in Oklahoma... Starting in Memorial Day, no, spring, like March. Spring, March, yeah. March time frame. Every Wednesday at noon, they test the sirens. That's, From that's March to like August. And you, I mean, you just, you're used to it. <laughs> it's literally a good five months of your life that they, every Wednesday at noon. And now, have you seen a tornado? I've never seen seen an actual tornado touch down but i've seen the in the sky where it was clearly about to happen but i've i respect tornadoes and i don't i'm not out in my lawn <laughs> you know <laughs> watching so yeah that's not my thing I, I i mock the people who chase them i'm like because they're always oh, like I'm oh my gosh i'm like why are you out there like this is not surprising Totally fascinated by tornadoes and I will watch like the chaser videos and um, there was a town in Oklahoma called Moore, M-O-O-R-E. A tornado supposedly will never take the same path twice, which I find interesting. And the town of Moore has been flattened at least twice in my lifetime, but it was different parts of town and the last two were one mile apart from each other. Wow. But they didn't take the same path. And then you hear that a tornado can be a mile wide and my brain just can't comprehend it. Yeah. Because the one that flattened more was literally a mile wide tornado. And I just like, I'm sitting there like, 
That's just a wall just, of storm. Yeah. I can't. Com- my brain just doesn't compute a mile wide storm. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I just happened to watch a documentary a couple weeks ago and about bad weather. And yeah. one of the episodes was tornadoes. And it was fascinating from like a yeah. how they develop and that they're trending worse. Like mm-hmm. they're not getting any better yeah. they're just getting it's bigger like and, hot air and cold air and yeah and the timing of them is like where it used to you had warning but now they're just like it can get to a mile wide and you know really really fast the town of Moore had i think three minutes which is unheard of to take yeah. cover that's that's crazy i know it's crazy i, I, I remember I, once one time i was working <laughs> and where i lived the tornado sirens go off if it's like in your county essentially so the county i lived in it was very clear on the map if there was even a chance it would like come towards me and i was on a meeting with a customer they're like do you need to like take cover because they could hear this <laughs> i was like it, i'm not in its path it's fine and they were like we would feel better <laughs> if you <laughs> would just get off this call. and i was like guys look and i'm like showing them the map yeah. You just go stand in the doorway with your laptop. <clears throat> well, I was like, I can go sit in my closet, I guess, and take this call if it'll make you feel better. But like, I'm truly not in the path. Like, it's north of me. And, you know. Now, did you lose power a lot because of all that activity? No? Mm-mm. Is everything There's underground? A- well, so where I lived, it, it only hit once in the town I lived in ever since I'm aware of where it did damage and it hit a trailer park. <laughs> you know, that there's nothing, yeah, there's no there's no attractive to trailer parks, but a girl in my sorority in college grew up in a really small town called four acre. And there is a legend that an Indian named four acre and said, as long as you never name rename the town, a tornado will never hit here. And a tornado has never hit four acre. Oklahoma. I so, would, I would, I would stick with the name. I know. <laughs> I would not be Don't changing. fix what's not broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting. I don't know how I we've know. never talked about this before. I know. Weather is crazy. Especially, like, nowadays, every time I turn around, it's something. Yeah. Well, did you see Charleston a couple weeks ago? Like, right before Christmas? Did not ring a bell? No. Nope. With the rain in Charleston, it, was like, flooded. No. That's what oh, we're, we're flooding right now. It's, yeah, like, crazy. Like, a real flooding? Charleston. Aerial flooding? Whatever they call it? Yeah. We're not... Well, I mean, parts of... The south of town floods pretty bad, like, the roads, but... Where I'm at, we don't really flood. Rory's holes in the backyard are filling with water. But <laughs> Strides are not rocks in there. I would have put rocks in. We, she digs through the rocks. So <laughs> She ate a bag of chocolate. So I made homemade cookies over the weekend because mm. David was like, you made me cookies. You we went to a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went to a friend's miss party and came back and Rory had eaten like the entire bag of chocolate chip cookies. That sounds like diarrhea. She didn't get sick. A couple weeks ago, she ate a thing of Oreos. Didn't get sick. And so we're, we're just sitting there like these are up on the kitchen cabinet. It's not like we're putting them on a platter, you know, in the living room. And so <laughs> I was just like, I have to take everything off my counter, I guess. So, I um, yeah, you're not making me want an indoor dog. <laughs> she, when we're here, she's fine. Like right now, by herself with nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you got a Ninja Creamy for Christmas. You did? Yes, you told me. Have you okay. used it yet? I made ice cream for the first time over the weekend. And? One, I used like Fair Life chocolate milk, and that was all I used. And it's like a Wendy's Frosty. Ooh. And it's really good. So it's all protein ice cream. And then I made a cake batter protein ice cream with one of my premier protein shakes, and then like cake batter flavoring. My stomach just grumbled. 
<laughs> and I'm I not even a nice person. Sweet for me, but I I could tweak it to make it a little better. And isn't it isn't it creamy just something that spins it until it freezes or doesn't freeze? I guess gets gets cold. Well, as you possible. freeze it and then you put it in the creamy, and it goes through and like makes it creamy like ice cream. Oh. But I also found so I got on the TikTok rabbit hole of Ninja Creamy. Recipes. You you in a rabbit I hole know. on TikTok? Someone took like fresh strawberries and like sugar free lemonade and froze them and created like. A strawberry lemonade sorbet. So that's my next one. And I can make smoothie bowls. Because I make smoothies a lot. And so I was mm -hmm. like, ooh, I can just like put it in here. So, yeah. Pretty exciting. I, you're different. You're better than I am because I, I watch all the TikToks and the YouTube videos about cooking. I've watched tons of them, like probably 75%, but I never make anything I see ever. I do all the time because I sent you that one with the orson and orzo, which was super easy and super delicious. Yes. And the chicken wings. <laughs> the Gordon Ramsay chicken wings? Yes. Yeah. I was shocked that because we've done a, um, a pan fry like that, but mm -hmm. we cooked them completely in the pan and it gets kind of messy and stuff like that. So it was mm -hmm. interesting that he he kind of like seared them using that method and then put them in the oven i was like oh yeah. that's weird but not at the same time we air fry ours i mean if, if gordon ramsay's doing it it's going to be good so exactly but no we air fry ours every time we don't yeah david smoked them a couple times which those are good but generally we just throw them in the air fryer i had smoked wings last friday did so you much. use any of the sauces <laughs> i did not oh. i'm i am a little afraid to start using them because they you bought me like the hottest sauces <laughs> so i'm still like strategizing how i'm going to incorporate these into something that does, doesn't tear me a new asshole <laughs> does Devonte do spicy no no oh. i'll i'll go spicier than him okay. he he will do it if i think sometimes if it's masked with sugar he can tolerate a bit more but i will literally torture myself like sweating and like I'm taking my hat off I'm like <gasps> and I'll keep eating and then and he's like what are you doing I'm like I don't know I'm just really high right now on on hot sauce <laughs> and then I regret I it I regret it a day later I'm just like oh I like spicy if it's flavoring I don't like to torture myself like the people that do like those challenges where if you eat the hottest wing on the planet you get a t-shirt yeah I'm not doing that yeah yeah but or the chip the flavor. death chip or whatever it is that's a chip. It's this chip. You buy this chip and they put it on you TikTok and YouTube and it's like the hottest thing you could eat and you have to you have to eat it and then like wait five whole minutes before you can have any water or anything and yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm pretty sure it's you're like on the brink of death by the time yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not. Yeah.